Hello, my name is Raphael James and I'm here to present Personal plus context navigation combining AR and shared displays in network path following. This work was done with Anastasia Bezayanos and Olivier Chapuis from University Paris Saclay and Tim Dwyer, Maxime Corday and Arno Prouzo from Monash University. Think of a simple scenario. Multiple travelers in the metro look at a public display, but they are interested in different kinds of information. They have personal preferences and do not want their information to be publicly disclosed. Or colleagues working together to analyze a social network, but each has their own personal information about aspects of the data. In these situations, large displays are well suited to displaying large amounts of data due to their high resolution and also can accommodate a large number of people in front of it due to the large space. However, they suffer from some drawbacks such as the lack of privacy as the content on the wall is visible to all users. We suggest combining large display with augmented reality advanced displays that can show personal information. The addition of personal augmented headset can provide a space to see and interact with personal information which is directly superimposed on the large display that acts as a context and is eyes free. We chose to focus on a network shown on a large display like Metro Maps or a traffic network. And we considered how can we use a personal AR headset to do a very common network task to navigate the network. To aid navigation, we created a set of AR courses that exist only in the headset, but are tied to the network on the large display. Let's see an example. On the left, you can see the network shown on the large display with a user in front of it wearing a headset. In the middle, we can see the picture of the combined view of the large display and the AR cursors, while on the far right, you see the content displayed only in the AR view. These AR cursors only exist in the AR headset. Their navigation, they are personal and hands free. And we designed them so they would help with some limitations related to head mounted displays, such as a limited field of view of the headset that cannot see the entire network on the large display, and accidental head movements. We explored two types of AR based cursors with two visual variations each. In each of these images, in black is the context network shown on the large display. In color, is the AR cursor technique delimited by the box indicating the field of view of the AR headset. We worked on two metaphors inspired by the literature. First, the sliding metaphor, which focuses on an AR cursor tightly bound to the topology of the network on the large display. We call this persistent coupling. Let's talk about the first technique. For the purpose of explaining, I will show you animations of the techniques, containing, first, only part rendered in the AR headset, and then, both the techniques and the network. In reality, the network represented by grey links and blue disks is not visible inside the AR view. This is a sliding ring rendered in the AR headset. And here, together with the network on the large display. Inspired from the link sliding technique, the sliding ring consists of a head cursor, shown with a dot at the center of the view, linked by a dotted line to the technique cursor. The technique cursors will follow the topology of the network, meaning that to go from one link to another, it needs to slide through the nodes connecting them. The dotted line allows for the user to never lose the position of the cursor on the network. We have an elastic variation of this technique that bends the network towards the cursor itself while navigating. Let's see it. Again on the left, we see the rendering in the AR headset. And on the right, we see the techniques with the network on the wall display. Sliding elastic will bend a subpath, a group of links and nodes of degree 2, towards the head cursor. The bended subpath is a duplicated version of the active subpath, only shown in AR. It will also show in dotted lines the position of the node from the active subpath on the bed did subpath. This way, you always have the path with you in the AR headset. The second group of techniques follows a magnetic metaphor. Here, 
the AR cursors can freely navigate inside the network. We call this transient coupling. Let's see an example. First, the magnetic area cursor. This technique shows rays around the head cursor. Here is the result in the AR headset. And here is with the network. A solid ray shows the links you are connected to. A fading ray shows the links you can possibly connect to if you go nearer to them. With this technique, you can freely jump from one link to another, but it still helps you to stay connected to the network on the large display, for example, if you move your head by accident. We also have an elastic variation for this technique. The elastic variation of the magnetic metaphor, called magnetic elastic, has the same visuals as the sliding elastic technique. You can see what is rendered in the headset on the left and on the right, together with the network on the large display. You can freely move in between links and the bending subpath will fade, here shown as getting darker, to show the risk of disconnecting from the current subpath. We refer you to the paper about technical and design details for these techniques. After developing the techniques, we wanted to know which AR cursor performs best and for what types of navigation tasks. We chose to evaluate these techniques in two lab experiments, focusing on path-following tasks that are central in network navigation. We evaluate the techniques along their motor differences, thus focusing on the speed of completion of a path. In each experiment, we focused on an extreme case for the, for the task. Let's see them. The first task is a simple path selection. To validate a part of the path, either a node or a link, you only have to touch each with the designated cursor. It is thus a fairly easy task that does not require a lot of precision. We call this path selection. What you see here is a baseline condition without any technique. In the second, the task is a steering light task, which needs high precision. To validate a part of the path, either a node or a link, you have to trade the path with the designated cursor on its entire length. We call this path tracing. For each experiment, we highlight the path to follow inside the headset, and the trial starts when the participant crosses the first node of the path indicated inside the headset. In both experiments, we vary the weights of different paths. Weights represent user preferences, and our techniques consider them to determine the power of attachment on the different path. We refer you to our paper for details. We also test two graphs in our experiments, as topology may play a role in performance. They are a quasi-planar graph that matches our metro scenario, and a small word graph to see if the results of the techniques can be generalized to the graphs. In each of the two experiments, we compared our AR techniques against a baseline condition of using no technique, just a simple AR headset cursor. So let's look at the results. For the low precision path selection task, where participants just had to touch the links, we found that magnetic area was preferred by the participants amongst all techniques for this task. However, in a performance result, magnetic area and baseline technique, a simple cursor, performs better than the others. Overall, we observe worse performance for the elastic variations, possibly from the visual clutter caused by the AR on the context by the link duplication. We thus did not include them in the second experiment. For the high precision path tracing task, where participants had to trace the links, Sliding rings is preferred by the user for this task, but also sliding ring exhibits better performances and after comes magnetic area and then baseline. With our work, we showed overall that persistent coupling, like the sliding techniques, works well for high precision path following tasks where controlling the AI view is hard. But also that flexible transient coupling, like magnetic techniques, works best for low precision tasks we also saw that the elastic variations for our metaphor did not perform well. But more generally, 
We demonstrated that having a visualization context on an external display and a personal navigation view in a headset is feasible and experimentally shown. We saw that different techniques are suited to different types of tasks. This has the implication that in every system, users will need to fluidly switch between techniques depending on their goal. We plan to study this transition in a set of high-level tasks, such as a network analysis, that will go beyond path following. Also, our results show elastic variations perform worse than their basic counterparts. Elastic variations can, however, be interesting when we want to compare the selected current path with other locations on the network, since we can pull the path with us. We also considered in our work 3D variations over techniques, but the tight coupling between AR and the context makes the use of that tricky, as it would require to solve issues such as overlap or visual discontinuity. While our techniques address head movement issues, they could also be applied for eye gaze interaction, available in new headsets, as the techniques will help maintain a visual link with the network when there are accidental head or eye movement. This would, of course, require further empirical evaluation. In summary, we combine a large display rendering a context network with AR headsets to provide personal navigation. We introduce four augmented reality cursors techniques that can help viewers navigate the network on the large display. And we experimentally compared them, providing guidelines for future research. But more generally, we experimentally demonstrated that having a visualization context on an external display and a personal navigation view in a headset that is tightly coupled to the external display is feasible. For more details, Please look at the paper, which you can find at the link below. Thank you.